before I did Everest, I planned to go to this monastery, or it's actually a Buddhist center. There's no monks, so I shouldn't call it a monastery. <laughs> and they have these cabins there that are set up for what they call solo retreats. So there's a temple, and then like up in the mountain, they drive you up some crazy road, and there's like a little cabin there, and they just leave you. And once a week, they'll drop off your groceries for a week, but it's in like a drop box. So they leave it, they leave, and then you get it later, you don't see them. And I set that up because I was just going, like I did the walk and I did Everest, I got to stop and do nothing. Mm. And all that nothing, I could create what I want to do next. And it was my third time there. You know, the first time I get there, like, I sit on this meditation cushion. I'm like, you know, I had these, like, glimmers of, like, before where, like, I call them moments of being. Or Virginia Woolf called them that. There's, like, a moment in your life where everything just makes sense. Like, you had that before, yeah? Yeah, of course. Like, everybody has. It's, like, it's just, everything just makes sense. And I was, like, I I felt one of those moments on the summit of Everest. I felt it like a couple of times on the walk. And it's like, there's got to be a better way to like access that than like risking my life to like, (laughs) you know? So I'm like, I sit down on the cushion. I'm like, okay, maybe this is like how I'm going to find it. And then like almost immediately my mind comes in. It's like, hey, did you notice like whoever was here before you, they left some spices on the, on the like, at kitchen area you should get up and organize those so i get up and i like put them in order i go back on the meditation cushion close my eyes and take a deep breath and then again the voice is back it's like yo you didn't work out today you're you're gonna be meditating you're gonna get fat here you know like you should get out and run up the hill 10 times so i open up my eyes go outside run up the hill 10 times i get back on the cushion third time like sweaty now <laughs> and it's like i close my eyes And then the voice starts doing this weird thing. It starts like rehearsing what I'm going to say about this when I'm done with it. And it's like, this This is, this this is is everyone's experience with meditation, by the way. Like first, like, dude, this is insane. This is insane. You know? Uh, But as I, I stuck with it and last time I was there, I was there 21 days. Like no humans. People say it's like a silent retreat. I'm like, yeah, kind of. I mean, there's nobody there. You could talk if you want to, but like, <laughs> are you on? Like, are you smoking weed? You no, no, no. Completely like, sober. Yeah, yeah. Completely sober. Um, there's no electricity, no phone, no running water, no Wi-Fi, no Netflix, no iPad, no laptop, and I, I don't bring in the guitar either, because that then I could like work. Where is this? Where is this again? Just is it Colorado? Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. The place is called Tara Mandala. I always regret saying it because, like, it seems to be getting harder and harder to, like, get slots <laughs> to, like, go. You're, you're creating they your own up. demise. Yeah. Uh, so I probably just ruined that forever. We could bleep it for but, like, you But, like, an interesting thing, Mike, like, when I was there and I'm actually fully alone, I don't feel lonely at all. And also, I don't feel bored. Like, at all and it's like those things seem to come from like a kind of restlessness like a a reaching like a grasping like there's got to be more or like what's next mix what's next and like mix in some fomo into that concoction they seem to come from that and when i'm there it's like i'm working on being present so like what does it actually mean? That means like the way I'm using it is like being without thinking about being. So if I'm oh, drinking the water, like I'm opening it and in my mind I'm I'm not saying anything. There's no dialogue. I'm just feeling how it feels to unscrew the mm, top mm, and mm. and doing the whole day like that. And of course you lose it a thousand times, but it's like doing it with training wheels mm. for mindfulness. Cause no one's there to distract you. Like if you get upset. It's your fault. Like no one else is there. You know, something you're doing here, you know, so those things start to become obvious. Those things you do to piss yourself off or, you know, hold resentments and that kind of thing. So all that to say, like, I'm not sure like that loneliness doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be an inherent part of me. Right, it's either be like it's like external. It's it's yeah. imposed by the things around you. Yeah, I don't want to say that or the way I interact with them. Oh, yeah. The only reason I make that distinction, because if I'd say it's just the things, 
then the things are in control of me. Yeah, and that's and, the, like, and nah. that's and that's the biggest thing. I'm a you, big boy. Yeah, you know? but that's the biggest thing you fight off with uh, meditation, right? Is like everything in life. It's not about external factors. It's about your response to them, right? right? You know what I'm saying? And that's so it's right. like when you when you learn to. And I, I'm terrible at this. And I have a severe, I have severe anxiety. I have so, uh, uh, overactive mind that's just racing, racing like a hamster on a wheel, 24 seven. There's never a second of my day where it stops and it's just thoughts, 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 mostly negative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I so when I try to get into that meditative position and I know a lot of people watching this can relate to it as well. It's very, very fucking difficult <clears throat> for me to get into that place. But when I do, I, I find myself able to understand that, that um, being present as well as you find new connect connectivity to the things around you, to, to nature, to, to your water bottle, to Dude, whatever. It's crazy. So the fifth day I'm there and I'm, I do basically five hours of sitting meditation a day, not in one shot. I do two in the morning, one in the afternoon, two in the evening. And then I do three hours of walking meditation a day where oh, essentially okay. you're, you're walking, but you're feeling your breath and like your feet touch the ground as you go. And I'm jumping off your thread of like senses and connecting more. The fifth day I'm in the morning meditation. I'm sitting and like, by now I have nicknamed the voice in my head, Charlie, because like he's just talking. And like you said, if you really listen to your, vo your voice, your Charlie, you'll find it's, it's often negative and good Lord, is it repetitive? Yeah. Man. Like it's telling me the same shit. I'm like, yeah, I got it. I got it, man. Thank you. You know? <laughs> and so I love how you're thinking of on me. this fifth day, I'm in this meditation and it's like, it just started to get quieter and quieter and quieter. And then kind of like just went away. And the two hours ended, I get up and I realize like, even though I'm, I'm not sitting anymore, I'm still meditating. And I go outside and I take a piss. And it's no Charlie. It's like, I come back inside, wash my hands, no Charlie. And I make like, my lunch is like a cracker. You ever eat wasa bread? Yeah, yeah. It's wasa bread, yeah. avocado, and salt. That's it. Like very simple, right? No Charlie. I take a bite and it's like a f explosion of flavor. Like I I I'm not exaggerating. If you're like, Mike, what is the best meal of your life? It's that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. meal. Because you were living it. Because there was no screen of thinking categorizing analyzing planning thinking about the last avocado i ate thinking about the macronutrients of avocados did i get enough protein like it all that was there was the raw input of the taste and what happens is like when we remove that screen of charlie the senses like you said are so heightened and like i had moments there where i'm putting my sock on and I'm feeling like I'm having sex, man. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it was fuck. crazy. Like I'm not even exaggerating though, Logan. Like it's it was and then you start to hear the bird like the first five, six days, I didn't hear the birds. Like I heard some of them, but then this fifth, sixth day, I'm waking up, I'm like, there is a symphony out here. Mm. And it's like ones that are quieter that I'm probably further away that I literally wasn't hearing because Charlie was too loud. And yeah, the, like I it's felt so, high. I it's felt so high. Fucked up because and it's I, crazy because he's asked me to take drugs. It's like no, <laughs> but in a way, it was it was a, a heightened experience for sure. Well, you know, they say, and it's always there for us. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. They say meditation is like the strongest hallucinogen. If you if you master meditation, it can get you to a level that no you know mushroom or acid can get you to the highest level of that. And everyone that talks about meditation tells me the same thing. They're like, yo, you have to do this. You, you especially have to do this. Cause if I saw you on that walk and you were like, well, you know, like, what do you, what do you want me to pray for you for? I want Charlie to die. That mm. would be my answer. I can't, I, I need this, Charlie? my Charlie. I need this motherfucker to shut up <laughs> because I've said it on the show a million times. I can get anything I want in this world. The one thing I can't get is peace of mind. Mm. It's very hard for me to find it even momentarily. And everybody said, bro, you really got to try either a retreat meditation, something like that. And I, and I've, and honestly, like you said earlier, like my excuse, not my reason, my excuse is that I'm too busy. I'm too lazy. Yeah, I right. can't do it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think in, in this in this new year, I want to put a, a ton of effort into so doing it. So what are you going to do? 
I don't know. Maybe we could talk about it after the show. Yeah. Maybe you could say. But, but when we talk about it, you're gonna do something. Michael climbed the next mountain with you. You're gonna do he, something. He loves climbing. You know what I mean? You gotta do if something. If I put it out, if I put it out there, oh, my worst nightmare is you saying this shit a year from now on this podcast. Well, that, well your worst nightmare is about to come true. No, buddy. man. You're gonna <laughs> start. Just... First off, Charlie's not going. Your Charlie's not going to die. Ryan's right, right, right. alive and well. Yeah. <laughs> but you're gonna change your relationship to it, mm-hmm. where one, it sounds starts to sound comical. Like, oh, you're going to try to fuck with me like that? I've heard this before.